Welcome and thank you for joining us in our weekly devotions in honor of our Mother of Perpetual Health. Redemptorists, their friends and all of the devotees of Our Lady, how happy you can join us every week in prayer, song and reflection for this half hour. As we perhaps alone in our homes, apartments, hospitals and nursing homes, Look upon this most familiar picture of our mother of perpetual help today. Let us bring our lives to her, remembering that we are not really alone. Joining us are millions of people who, like ourselves, are also devotees of our mother of perpetual help from around the world, including the Philippines, India, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Singapore, Hong Kong, Japan, and Australia and many countries from the Southern Hemisphere of the Americas, including Mexico, Brazil, Paraguay, and Argentina. In our Mother Church of St. Alphonsus in Rome, where the miraculous icon rests high above the main altar, and in all parts of Eastern and Western Europe, Ukraine and Russia, people are praying the same perpetual help devotions prayers in hundreds of different languages. In North America, people from New York, Boston, St. Louis, Seattle, New Orleans, people pray and sing God's praises through the perpetual novena. Here at home in Canada, more than 100 parishes across the country celebrate the devotions each week. And for more than 100 years, at St. Patrick's Church in downtown Toronto is a national shrine of our Mother of Perpetual Help. There, the novena is celebrated six times every Wednesday bringing together more than a thousand people from nations all around the globe to pray the devotions novena. Together, we join our songs and thoughts in meditation and in prayer, seeking her intercession for our daily needs, spiritual and material, for ourselves and for our loved ones. And we know her son listens to her. From that single soft young mother's voice, in a remote shepherd's town, to now all of our voices from around the whole world, the son who was hers and whom she gave to us listens as lovingly today as he did when laying in a manger. So whenever we look upon this beloved icon, we do so with confidence that we never pray alone. Our joined voices in the millions are one in mind and heart Together, we hold the whole world up to Our Lady, praying for the needs of all God's people. This is our family of prayer, the prayer of the world, making the perpetual novena the ongoing daily prayer of millions each week. Let our voices now become one of these.
Mother Mary has always been a constant in my life. She has been ever present. She's always led me to Jesus. I am a cradle Catholic, someone who was born to Catholic parents. I learned from the get-go the beauty and comfort of praying the rosary. My mom brought her rich Catholic Filipino heritage into our home. I remember seeing my mom daily with a rosary in her hand. She quite often fell asleep praying the rosary, then upon waking would continue where she last remembered leaving off. Oftentimes, when I awoke and went into my parents' bedroom, I saw my mom's rosary clutched in her hands, or it was in their bed. My mom taught us how to pray by kneeling with us at our bedsides when I was growing up. I always smiled and found comfort when visiting my paternal grandma and grandpa, as they never seemed to miss turning in for the evening without playing the rosary on cassette tape and praying along as part of their nightly routine together. They used to play it so loudly that we could all participate by following along anywhere we were in their home if we wanted to. My Lola, who is my Filipino maternal grandmother, once made a road trip with me back to the city where I was attending college. She too always had a rosary on hand. She led us in prayer through all the mysteries of the rosary during our travels. She seemed happy meditating on these mysteries and proud to quiz me on my memorization of them. It's from all of this that I learned to turn towards Mother Mary, towards our Catholic faith and towards Jesus. I don't know how, nor do I desire to function without my faith. As you know, the Catholic program RCIA stands for Rite of Christian Initiation of Adults. It's a program for adult converts to Catholicism. I journeyed through the RCIA program with my then fiancé, now husband, for nearly 21 years. In studying our Catholic faith together, we learned to turn to Mother Mary in our ups and downs, which in turn always led us to Jesus. We grew in knowledge of Jesus' gift of Mother Mary as our spiritual mother, a gift to us all in the Church. We further developed a trusting relationship with Our Lady. It is more than a devotion to Mary. It is a life-changing event and way of life. Through this relationship, we continually renew our baptismal vows and promises. Consecrating ourselves to Mary is one way that we chose as a family to grow in that knowledge, love, and sacrifice. Like Jesus, Mary doesn't force herself upon us. Through and with Mary, we receive graces as she is the mediatrix of all graces. In uniting ourselves in this way, we aim to grow in holiness. We are all called to holiness. God created us all to be saints, whether we know it or not. We are made to know him, love him, and serve him. Our family has embraced not only a Marian way of life, but also one that seeks His divine mercy through Mother Mary, Mother of Mercy. As instruments in our Mother's hands, we have embraced our mission to give witness to the Gospels and transform the world through our yeses and authentic love. Mother of Perpetual Help, your very name inspires confidence. We come before your holy picture in praise and thanksgiving to God, seeking your intercession with Jesus, your Son, for all the needs of our lives today. We celebrate your holy motherhood as we proclaim Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer. You answered when called to be the mother of our Lord, Obtain for us the grace to be alive to our baptismal call and especially to embrace the gospel of life and to respect all life on earth. You wondered as your son grew in wisdom, knowledge and grace. Intercede for us so that we may welcome the word of God in our lives and be bearers of the good news to one and all. You delighted as your son healed the sick. Intercede for our sick, that they may receive good health 
and that they in their turn may be healers to others. You enjoyed peace as your Son comforted the afflicted. Intercede for all who suffer, so that they may know that we carry their burdens with them, and in this way we keep the law of Christ. You rejoiced as your Son forgave sins. Obtain for us the forgiveness of our sins, and lead us to unbind others and set them free. You suffered at the wounds your Son endured for our salvation. Help us to bind up the brokenhearted and to give hope to the downtrodden. You exalted in your Son's resurrection. Obtain for us the grace to persevere in his way all the days of our life and be granted a place in heaven. You are the first of all the disciples and saints. We trust in your motherly love and care. Obtain for us all the graces we need to fulfill God's plan each day in our lives. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection implored your help or sought your intercession, was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother, the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer us. Amen. We are God's children. Have you ever wondered what was going through the mind of St. John when he wrote that letter? John was filled with the sense of God's great love for us, the love that had manifested itself in Jesus. And all of a sudden, it seems like he just realizes, and we are God's children. Let me give you an example of how this works. I've used this example once before, so excuse me if you've heard it. But I remember when I was a seminarian, and we decided that instead of having our big seminaries where meals were cooked for us, where the brothers did a lot of the work around the house, we would establish small houses, small communities, where we would learn to cook for ourselves, to clean for ourselves, to kind of run a household like most of you do. It was a bit of a stunning experience for many of us. But I remember the first house that I was in and there were five seminarians and two priests. And the five seminarians decided that they would each take one night of the week to cook. I had Thursday night, the fourth night. I spent most of the afternoon preparing a meal as carefully as I could I got it all ready and at exactly the right time, I put it on the table, it was hot and ready, and I watched everybody sit down and take their share, and the conversation went around, what we'd done during the day and all over the place, and I sat absolutely fixated on the meal to see if anybody would thank me. Do you think anybody thanked me? Of course not, it was supper time. You eat, you get up, you do the dishes, you leave. And then I remembered myself thinking, you know, this is Thursday night. I've had three meals with this community already, Monday, Tuesday, Monday. I never said thank you. I just sat down and ate. And then the light went on. How many hundreds or thousands of meals did my mother make for me and my brothers and my sister? And how often did we say thank you? I suspect the most common thing she heard was, ooh, I don't like that. I wonder sometimes how mothers survive. Well, I know the answer. It's because they love their children. But in that family, you see these kinds of relationships where deep down there is the caring, there is the re renewal, and there is the healing that takes place when we do fail and hurt one another. And this is where we start to see, I think, how wonderful family is and can be for us. 
And this is what I would invite you to spend your time reflecting upon in your own families. Think of the blessings, the graces, the gifts, and the challenges that have all been part of your identity and your growing up. It really is a place where God's love flourishes in our relationships with one another. But I wanted to ask myself a second question, thinking about families, and that is, what difference does it make if we are Christians? What difference should it make in our families if we are Christians? And here's where I want to just mention a few things that I think should be part of a Christian family. And the first thing is, I think we need to renew our sense of praying together. You know, I've been very shocked how many Catholic families I've gone to visit. We sit down to a meal and nobody says grace anymore. Can we not take 20 seconds to thank God for these gifts that are placed before us? Or are we slipping into that mentality of our world? It's my food. It's not my food, it's a gift from God. And it doesn't take much to just stop and thank God and let the world and your own family know that we're thanking God for what's given to us. And I would hope that we would pray not just at meals, but I think it's also important to recognize that even when there is hurt, failure, sometimes betrayal, there is still another grace of love that we can pray for, and that is the grace of forgiveness. Sometimes I think we need to practice that in little things, not just saying, I'm sorry, but facing an issue with a beloved and saying, you know, I'm sorry, and I'm going to try and learn from this. Because if we can do it in little things, maybe when the hurt or the betrayal is something great, maybe we will find a way to climb out of that by the grace of God. I don't think we can do it by ourselves, but I do think God's grace is there to give forgiveness because that is an imitation of our merciful God. It's not an easy thing to do, but it's part of love because we are imperfect human beings. But that's part of God's whole plan. It's so that we will learn to care for one another even when we're not perfect.
Lord Jesus Christ, at a word from Mary, your mother, you changed water into wine at Cana in Galilee. Hear our prayers and grant our petitions in honor of our mother perpetual help. Grant wisdom and courage to all our religious and civil leaders, our Holy Father, our bishops, and all who lead us, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant peace, unity, and good harvests in all the world, especially in places of conflict, war, famine, and need, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant married couples the grace of their sacrament, wives and husbands a binding love for each other, parents the grace to welcome and cherish their children, single parent families unity and strength, and peace and blessings on all our homes, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant to our single adults fulfillment in their call, to our young people success in their endeavors, and courage to witness to their faith, to our elderly vitality, security, and contentment in their days, and to the separated and divorced, the grace of your spirit, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant workers confidence in their work, dignity in their accomplishments, joy in their contributions, a just and living wage, and to the unemployed, grant gainful work, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant to your church many laborers for the harvest, good priests, brothers, sisters, and laity, who will dedicate their lives to your faithful people, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant eternal life to all the deceased and a place in the communion of the saints, where every tear shall be wiped away and where we shall meet you, our God, face to face, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant to each of us the grace to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you each day of our lives. For whatever we do to the least of our sisters or brothers, we do to you, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Let us pray. Mother a perpetual help, we who call on your most powerful name, thank you for the graces we have received through your intercession and for hearing our prayers today. For God, who is mighty, has done great things through you, and God's mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. Amen. Thank you for joining us in prayer and song in our devotions today. Thank you for your faithful prayers for all our people and their needs, especially for those of you who have sent in your prayer requests. Our volunteers read and answer every one of your letters. We know you pray for us and we pray for you. And thank you for your generous donations and financial support. Your donations, along with all of our supporters across Canada, have kept the devotions on TV for more than 20 years. Every donation, large and small, is precious to us and allows us to continue this ministry to you. The TV devotions gather over 40,000 people every week in homes, hospitals, seniors' residences, apartments and Catholic schools as together we pray to God through Mary for the great spiritual and temporal needs of our people. Please help us if you can make your check payable to Perpetual Help TV Devotions or go online to our websites www.redemptrists.ca or www.redemptrists.tv I make use of the PayPal link we have established there for your convenience. Official charitable income tax receipts are mailed out monthly. Write to us with your prayer requests. Each week, we Redemptors offer a special Mass of Thanksgiving to God 
in honor of our Mother of Perpetual Help for all of your intentions. If you would like a free prayer card like the one used on the TV devotions, write to us at the address on your screen. So now following along with your prayer card, a final blessing. May the Lord Jesus Christ, Son of Mary, of perpetual help, be with you to defend you, within you to sustain you, before you to lead you, behind you to protect you, and above you to bless you all the days of your life. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to Devotions TV in this new age of mercy, produced by the Redemptorists of Canada on national TV every week since 1995. Now you can find this week's program streaming live every week on Redemptorist TV and many more special features. Please join us on Redemptorist TV. Tell your friends, help us celebrate. Our program is made possible by you, the viewers, and our mother of perpetual help.